Hello everyone, welcome to Sunpacking. In this video, we're going to work on a machine learning project. We're going to predict the Black Friday sale using machine learning. So for that, I have found a data set on Kaggle named as Black Friday Sale Exploration. So we start our project by importing some basic libraries like pandas, numpy, cpon, and matplotlib. Plot. We have imported pandas first. Pandas is a very basic library for performing machine learning and data analysis stuff. So what pandas does here actually, it helps us to read the data, read the data frame, manipulate the data. We cannot even read the data frame without using pandas. So pandas is a very important library for uh, performing machine learning. And then we have NumPy over here. NumPy stands for numerical Python. NumPy helps us to deal with different kinds of array. Also, we can do statistical calculation and other calculation uh, very quickly using Num NumPy library. Then we have imported Seaborn as SNS. Seaborn is a visualization library. It helps us to visualize the data and uh, we can get very quick decision by visualizing our data and C1 makes it easy for us. Then we have our plotting library, uh, matplotlib.pyplot, and this this library helps us to uh, plot the data. Now we're going to import the data set. To import the data set, we have used pandas read CSP, and so we have successfully imported the data set, and this is how our data set looks like. As you can see over here, we have over 5 lakhs rows. That means our dataset is a very big dataset. And now it's time to understand the dataset properly. Because after understanding the dataset, we can make a decision and we can perform our machine learning um, process. And so first we check the, data, uh, the shape of the data data set using the f.shape function as we can see we have over 5 lakhs rows and we have 12 columns in our data set and uh, that means our data set is very big and big enough to perform a machine learning uh, model on it uh, as we know earlier that uh, if the data set is big if more that data that means the uh, model will be more efficient and then we get a very quick statistical overview of the data set so as we can see we have our mean val mean standard deviation minimum and maximum uh, values for all the numerical columns we have these columns are nothing but the numerical columns in our presented in our data set and we get statistical overview for numeric numerical columns only and this makes sense actually right okay so now we're going to get a very basic overview of the data using df.info function and as we can see over here we have different uh, types of data type present in our data set like we have uh, integer type data type we have object type data type we have float type data type and now we're going to check if our data set has any null values or not so to check the null values we're going to use is null.sum function and as you can see we have uh, lots of missing values present in two columns in product category 2 and product category 3 and uh, to perform machine learning and get a good as a good uh, model to build a good model we have to uh, deal with the missing values first after dealing with the missing values after taking care of them we can uh, perform our machine learning and it will be uh, then it will uh, make a efficient model a good model if data set uh, has lots of missing values and we perform machine learning uh, models with the missing values it will not be a good model so we have to delete the missing values first 
before we uh, apply machine learning models and we'll uh, we'll get rid of all the missing values uh, before we uh, perform our machine learning models so now it's time to visualize the data so we start our visualization with a count plot and uh, as we told earlier that we will be using sns seaborn as our visualization library so in the x-axis it's a we're giving gender and as we can see that uh, most of the customers for the black crida cell is male and uh, uh, a very few customers are female uh, as you can see if we compare the, them then the female customers are like one third of the male customer yeah, i guess this is how it the visualization this is what the visualization shows us okay and after that we're going to uh, do a bar plot and in the x-axis we are giving the gender uh, feature and in the y-axis we are uh, putting marital status in the y-axis and so this is how our uh, visualization looks like and I guess this visualization shows that the gender uh, female gender is slightly higher uh, compared to the male gender uh, in uh, terms of marital status okay after that we're going to uh, make a bar plot and uh, in the x-axis we are putting gender again and purchase is in the y-axis this time and uh, it shows that the higher purchases have been made by the uh, male gender uh, if we compare to the female uh, gender it's a big higher uh, the male bar okay and after that we're going to make another bar plot and this time we are putting occupation and the x-axis and purchase in the y-axis and you know that the occupation has a direct effect on the purchases done by the customers and over here as we can see uh, occupation code 8 12 15 and uh, 16 17 have higher purchases compared to the others and after that we're going to make a bar plot again and this time we are comparing uh, the male and female gender uh, the same plot but this time we are putting gender as the way and as we can see that the female gender uh, in the occupation uh, code 18 uh, has the higher purchases compared to the others uh, the, here occupation code 18 And now we're going to detect the outlier. So what is an outlier actually? Okay, let's Google it. What uh, is outliers? Let's find the definition here. Okay, so as we can see here, it says an outlier is an observation that lies an abnormal distance from other values in a random sample from a population. So what does it mean? It seems very complex. So what does it mean actually? It means a outlier is nothing but the uh, but a data point that is uh, far and uh, at a very distance point from the other uh, data points. So how do we detect outlier? Uh, there is a technique technique. So we're going to use the box plot to detect the outliers. So uh, we're going to use the box plot from sns so in the x-axis we are giving gender and the y-axis we are uh, giving purchase this time and as we can see over here uh, we have outliers these are nothing but outliers this is outlier so um, and the data points over um, 20,000 uh, are the outliers so next we're going to check the outlier for the occupation in the x-axis and uh, purchase in the y-axis so we have outliers here as well as we can see um, the data points over above 20,000 are the outliers so 
there is lots of outliers um, here as well and now we're going to check the outliers for uh, purchase in the y-axis and um, age in the x-axis as we can see um, for the data points over 20,000 uh, there is outliers as well okay as we can see over here and after that we check uh, the um, we check the outliers for the product category one and as you can see uh, there is um, uh, outliers as well uh, these are the outliers for the product category one 